So now that we have a good functional overview of what food processing is about, what we have to now look at is a bit of the structure associated with digestion. And for that reason, we'll entitle this next flowchart, Digestive Compartments. So as we're going to see, the digestive system is sectioned out into many different compartments, many different components. These are basically the organs of the digestive system. We all know that systems contain many organs, and all of those organs will serve as specific digestive compartments. Now, this compartmentalization is very purposeful. The whole goal of creating or having these digestive compartments is the following. This is going to prevent those enzymatic hydrolysis reactions from digesting yourself. Okay, This is exactly what we're trying to prevent. Because, take a look here, where well, we're utilizing our enzymes via hydrolysis to break down things during digestion, right? That's chemical digestion. But what we have to avoid is having these enzymes run rampant, having these enzymes completely over-digest, which they're very much capable of doing. They're not um, knowledgeable beings. They are just going to digest whatever is in their way. So what we have to do is we have to make sure that there are specific compartments both within the cell and outside of the cell that prevents the enzyme from digesting your own self, the digesting the actual tissues that make up you. And this is all going to be done via compartments, compartmentalization. Let's take a look at how this is done both intracellularly and extracellularly. To begin, let's take a look at intracellular digestion. So take a look at that word. We have intra, which means within the cell, and digestion. Because remember, digestion's goal is to make small molecules so that the cells can take those small molecules in and use them. Because it's all about keeping the cell happy. The cell is the functional unit of life, so it has to get what it wants. Now, during intracellular digestion, there will be specific compartments that form that prevent the enzyme from digesting the cell alive. How is this going to happen? This is going to happen via what are known as food vacuoles. These will be found within cells. These food vacuoles will fuse with lysosomes. So if we go all the way back to bio 1, lysosomes are good at lysing. They're good at breaking down things. These are cell bodies that break down stuff via hydrolytic enzymes. Just like we said, digestion is hydrolysis enzymatic reactions. So what you're going to do is you're going to combine one compartment, a food vacuole, that's a compartment, with another compartment, a lysosome, fuse those together intracellularly within the cell, and this is going to result in the following. You're going to get the hydrolytic enzymes that are present in which compartment? The vacuoles or the lysosomes? Of course, the lysosomes. These hydrolytic enzymes will break down the food that's within the vacuole, of course. That's a compartment. And in this fusion, you're going to have a very, very controlled breakdown of food via hydrolysis in a closed compartment. That's the key here. We do not want these hydrolytic enzymes to be going free throughout the cytosol. That's going to be really bad. The cell will almost immediately die because these are powerful bond-breaking enzymes that can break the bonds that make up your cell's integrity. So what do we do? We make sure that it's in a safe and closed compartment intracellularly. That compartment would be fusing a food vacuole compartment with a lysosome compartment to have a very controlled hydrolytic enzymatic breakdown digestive reaction intracellularly. So that's on a very micro level. But the digestive system is a very macro structure. It's a very macro system. There are many large compartments and large organs that are going to make sure that this doesn't happen in addition to the intracellular uh, attempts that we have here. So let's take a look at those. Those can be defined as mechanisms that involve extracellular outside of the cell digestion. So these are much more macro structures and these are very, very micro structures. So if we look at the extracellular digestion, this is when we're going to state that we're going to break down food because that's what digestion is all about, breaking down food from large components to smaller components. We break down food in what are known as compartments, like we said. And I like to think of these large extracellular compartments as organs. We break down food in specific digestive organs that are continuous. They are continuous with the outside of the body. 
So in order to explain what this means, what we have to look at are some examples. There are two ways to do extracellular digestion. One is a very simple way, and that's via something known as a gastrovascular cavity. This is seen in some organisms, some heterotrophs, some animals, and it's also visualized in figure 41.7. If you take a look at that figure, which is showing digestion in the hydra, you'll see what I mean over here by stating that we have compartments that are continuous with the outside of the body that basically compartmentalize this process. Very specific parts of the gastrovascular cavity are going to be responsible for very specific functions of digestion. We can get even more specific, even more compartmentalized if we look at a more advanced version of an extracellular digestive mechanism. And that would be done via something known as an alimentary canal. Both of these, gastrovascular and alimentary canal, were mentioned when we went over animal diversity. And over evolution, you get more and more advanced forms of digestion. The alimentary canal, which is shown in the very next figure, figure 41.8 in a couple of different organisms, that alimentary canal is the sort of climax. It's the completion of, a co of what would be known as a complete digestive system. This is a very well-organized, very compartmentalized, very specialized and differentiated digestive system. Because in this situation, what we end up having is a more advanced version of this. How so? Well, an alimentary canal is simply going to be defined as something that is a one-way tube. That's what a digestive system, a digestive tract is. It's a one-way tube with two openings on each side. Two openings on each side. And this is something we looked at during development when we looked at the idea of deuterostome or protostome. Those two openings are, of course, the mouth and the anus. And so what's going to happen here is that you have this very simple one-way tube that's going to allow for digestion to go through this entire tract. And, in, and while you're going through this tract, the key here is that there's a complete digestive system with many compartments. This one-way tube, therefore, will possess and be specialized. It will be specialized and differentiated into compartments. I like to think of, again, compartments as very specific organs that we'll get to. Specialized into compartments with specific processing functions. So I want to make sure you understand the term used here of processing. Because if you remember, we looked at food processing in the previous video. Food processing involved ingestion, digestion, absorption, and elimination. In an alimentary canal, there will be specific compartments, specific organs that are good at ingestion, that are good at digestion, that are good at absorption, and that are good at elimination. That's the specialization that's very, very important to understanding how compartmentalized an advanced digestive system is. That's what we're going to be now beginning to look at as we begin to look at human digestive system in the next couple of flowcharts.